Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Everton's crucial win over Chelsea in front of an inspired Goodison Park. Burnley's comeback victory against Watford officially relegates Norwich City. Liverpool end Newcastle's unbeaten run at St James's Park with a 1-0 victory. Manchester City respond a few hours later with a dominant win over Leeds and both North London clubs pick up maximum three points apiece in their race for the top four spots. All that and more coming right up. All right, my friend, just before we get going, we want to remind our viewers and listeners to make the NBC Sports Predictor part of your match week routine. Play Premier League Pick'em for free for your chance at $50,000 jackpot. Predict the outcomes of Premier League matches correctly and the jackpot is yours. Score big when you download the NBC Sports Predictor app today. Okay, my friend, we're going to start with today and there is no place we can start without going to, and I'm going to call it the great Goodison Park because that's what it was today, uh, Musty. Um... Hmm. Seems that like I've never, I can't recall in this situation seeing scenes, emotion, um, feeling for a football club in, in the way that we did as the Everton fans arrived early, supported their team, willed a victory, got the three points, cheered the team and put a different look on Everton's battle against relegation. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was special. It was a special game, Rob, and unprecedented to see that kind of support before, during, and after the game, the scenes there. I, I don't think I've ever seen a club come together in the desperation to stay in the Premier League. The fans won't let this relegation happen. <laughs> I mean, an incredible kind of sign of, of, of unity about it all. Um, I mean, you could only, if you're a player, I mean, wow, like looking back at relegation sort of fights that I was in yeah. over a few, period, a few years, Rob, in the Premier League, there was always a, a bit of a, you know, a negative atmosphere, a nervy atmosphere, or, uh, you know, waiting to boo, you know, we've been poor all season long. Mm. That's why they're there. Everton have had a disastrous season, mm. absolute disaster with everything, off the pitch, on the pitch, off the pitch, everything. And yet, because the situation they're in, this football club's fans mm. are like, we can't let this happen. And uh, again, that it, it, it shocked me actually. And, I, and it was gripping television, mm. mate. And I'm I just going to go to a line that Peter Jury said at half time, Rob, um, that I thought summed it up beautifully. It means so much, it almost hurts to watch. And I felt that, like it's so awkward mm. watching a club and a fan base that are driving that team with every muscle in their body. And yet it was difficult. Chelsea are a good side. Mm. They're the third, third best team in, in the Premier League. And, and Everton at times had to sit back and be patient. But the, the drive, the fire, the atmosphere... I thought was really well done, Rob. And, and mm. before I let you come back in, you know, Frank Lampard, as to be fair, remained pretty calm through this. Mm. And I think the balance of not letting it get too far ahead and emotions running too high, they were controlled. And Richarlison yeah. is a great example of a player that sometimes can, can, his emotions can get the better of him. Him, Seamus Coleman, the goalkeeper, tons. I mean, it was a, a, a pretty remarkable day at Goodison Park. Well, before we go any further, mate, you, you've kind of led me into a lovely line of unappreciated performers. There were 40,000 in red who weren't on a pitch <laughs> today uh, in blue at Goodison Park, mate. The Everton fans <laughs> are an underappreciated performer of the week. They won the game, Rob. I, I, I said it half to, yeah. I, I, we, when we talk, maybe break down the game a little bit, you know, a little bit of surprise when we saw that Frank went with the back five, four midfield, one up top with wing backs. And I pointed it out. We made a little sort of note of it, put a little graphic on, on the highlights to show this is different. Mm. Frank's gone a 4 5 1. Well, he didn't go 4 5 1 mm. after I was thinking, no, that wasn't right. He went five at the back. He had 40,000 in midfield. He was 40,000 fans in there. <laughs> they played the part, mate. They didn't kick a ball. They didn't they did, have they a did. throw in, but they played yeah. their part. It was, it was incredible. Did you see towards the end of the game, mate? I, I kind of laughed and then it, it something hit me almost like, wow, 
this is what this could mean. Do you see the guy who tried to hide the ball with about two minutes to go? The ball <laughs> went out, and he tried to hide it as if to think, yeah. right, this is my bit. If I can waste a bit of time, Everton are going to win this game, and we'll mm. be fine. And it was like a, just a great mm. little microcosm of, of what Everton means and what this football club is. And, that. and I just thought, we, you know, it's a week when there was plenty of great performances as well, great drama of the weekend. But that Everton, the, this will be a game, Rob, if they survive. Mm. But in the future, people are going to talk about. They're going to talk about the Chelsea game at home when they turned up mm. before the mm. game, when they supported mm. the team, when they cheered <laughs> the thing, and we saw the scenes after. This will be remembered. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. It's a good shout, Rob. And um, I'm sure, by the way, that the players absolutely appreciated the fans and what they've done for them. The manager talked about it afterwards. And also Seamus Coleman, Rob, just to yeah. kind of wrap up the the, the emotion mm. at the place. He's, he's basically said, paraphrasing a little bit, like, I, I've been here a long time. I, I've never felt that kind of emotion in the stadium as he felt in this game. And I think that just backs up why we've got it at the top of our podcast, yeah. why we're saying it's a spe- it was a special game and why it was so different to teams that are normally in that area of the league. Uh, Everton fans do not and will not allow this club to go down. That being said, this is a, this, this is a relegation fight for the ages, mate. And I, and I don't know whether we've seen something like this because the form of Burnley and Everton now are scaring the life, particularly out of Leeds United, but out of each other. You know, we talked, Rob, about, you know what, it's been an average of 35 points is safe. With these two teams now uh, inspired, particularly Everton and Burnley, I mean, who knows what the number's going to be? Yeah. It's going to be the top end of 30s now. Yeah. And Everton, even though you said there, Rob, that, that they'll remember that game at Goodison Park, well, they've still got a ton of work to do, given what the other teams are doing. So there's got to be more games like that at Goodison. And Everton have got to try and find some uh, better performances away from home. Um, but, 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 but back to the football, Rob. Just, I going on, just, good... just sorry, just let me hold you up. Yeah. Just one, before okay. we go now, just one yeah. point. Actually, it was Tim made the yeah. point, and obviously Tim's... In Evertonian through and through, a great career there and it's held in high regard. But he said to me, my slight worry now is that Everton have got, are going to need that every week to get going. And that can't happen every week. And he said, that worries me a little bit. Why can't it happen every week? But, well, just, you know, fans turning up with that feeling and that emotion. Yes, you know, they're going to play away mm. for three games or however many games they've got away. Mm. Not, mm. You know, today was mm. was 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 real deep rooted feeling and emotion. I don't, you know, I'm not sure if you can replicate that on a, on two or three more games. Listen, if, 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 it's, if it's on mm. them and they've got two games to go, absolutely. But Tim's saying, my next couple of games, can they still find that, that, that same form and drive and playing with the same intensity yeah. if all that isn't happening behind them. I thought it was quite an interesting point. I mean, the, the team have got to take that on and be able to carry games themselves and get themselves in that space without all that was going on. Yeah, they have. I mean, it's the same for the other teams, though, Rob, isn't it? Mm. You know, Everton have got to continue their this form. So yeah. have Burnley. Yeah. And Leeds have got to find some form. So I think you make... That's a valid point. I just think every Goodison game is going to be that sort of atmosphere. Yeah. The fans will continue to realise that they need the victory. I think just... Because it was Chelsea today, Rob, and the expectation was, my goodness, we absolutely desperately need the three points, but yeah. it's Chelsea. And I just think it was like, we got to give them everything that we can to try and um, get them there. And, and they won the game. They won the game. And they won the game with a goal from a player that epitomises emotional football. And by the way, side note, this, this guy played all our season. Yeah. He played all through the summer in the Olympics that, I, that we both covered. Yeah. We watched him get Olympic gold for Brazil. And then very, very, very little training time. The season starts. Now, most of the players in that Olympic kind of team, Rob, and the finalists, Spain and uh, Brazil, wasn't that thing? Um, they all had rest periods. I, I mean, Richarlison was straight into the team. Everton needed him. He's had a long season and he's still running his socks off. And maybe he's not the most technically gifted player you've ever seen, but I, I love his, I loved his, the way that he plays. He got the goal through closing down, through winning the ball back, pressurising Aspilicueta, takes his finish really, really well. They could have scored. Mikalenko had a chance a couple of minutes after that. Um, and, and wow, like for them to go ahead and to roll them sleeves up and to find a way to stop Chelsea. We know the Chelsea, and we'll go on and talk about Chelsea's yeah. front line is kind of still not producing the performances that Chelsea strikers should have done. It's still a, a fantastic team performance, yeah. um, Rob, for Everton in this game, wasn't it? 
absolutely. Um, and you, you do, you talk about Richardson. I mean, it, it's a day when you probably shouldn't pick out too many individuals because it was very much a team effort and, and, a, and, a, and a crowd effort. But um, I, I agree. And, and, you know, we we have a look at players on, on the pitch before kickoff and, and Richardson was one. And I just said, you know, I watched the game against Ever- uh Against Liverpool again, and you sort of said he's got fi- he's got a real fire in his belly, and it, and it matters to him, and it hurts him, and he feels it. At times he lets his emotion. He's a young he's a young man. At times his emotions run a little bit high, but I'd rather that, Rob. I'd rather that and to temper it. And sometimes you look at the other way, and you think, oh, it's, this guy needs a bit of fire in his belly. I think he's technically good. I think he can improve. I think he could be part of good things for Everton if and when they start to get things sorted out. And I think Frank will Frank will. Hmm. Um, enjoy working with him because I think Frank could turn him into a better player. There's four players, Rob, I am going to pick out for Everton because I thought they were spectacular. Abdoulaye Ducore in midfield. I thought he covered every inch. I saw him in attacking areas. I saw him defending. I saw him in wider spots. Richarlison that we've talked about, superb leading the line up front for long periods, you know, having to, to chase balls in behind on his own because there was nobody with him really, just the wider players. Yeri Mina, I thought, Rob, mm. I mean, he's a bit of a drama queen with a, the whole pushing and shoving, and he's, <laughs> but he's a super yeah. important player. And a, a guy that is going to get my underappreciated performer this weekend, Jordan Pickford. Now, maybe he divides opinion on certain uh, supporters, whether it's Everton or, or anywhere else, but he is underappreciated, Robbie Earl, because we never really talk about Jordan Pickford being one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League, but he is. He's the England number one. I think he's becoming a big game player. He's done great for England in massive games. And the save... So with the Mason Mount shot that came off the post, hit the other post, and then the follow-up shot came through. The speed at which, and I looked at this like 10 times, the dive across one side where he misses, he doesn't get there, hits the post. He's outside the post. The speed of him getting up and sprinting across the goal to dive and reach his hands forward to keep the ball out was spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. And I know, you know, you can describe it as, he's, you know, he, he scrapped his way across there or whatever. I mean, that, that was a, a sprint, a real quick 12-yard run across to make that save. A spectacular save. He gets one in the face a few minutes later on. But I, I just thought that, I see that I, I think that Tim thought that was a better save than the one that hits him in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I would respectfully disagree. I think he, you know, he, he didn't know much about it. He takes him in the face, fair play. But the sprint across... And just managing that save, I thought was remarkable. So, you know, a guy that, they're, they're, you know, anytime he makes a mistake, Rob, it's the sort of guy that people will jump on. And we've done it in previous seasons, I'm sure. I think there was a period of last year, Rob, wasn't it? We had a, he had a bit of a rough patch. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for the most part, he hasn't. He's a consistent guy. Gareth Southgate loves him as a goalkeeper. And I just think he is underappreciated. He won't be this weekend because of the saves that he made, but it's the time to highlight him and to, to, to kind of reinforce that he's a blimmin' good goalkeeper and he's England number one. And in big games and big moments where you might expect his emotional kind of, uh, not looseness, but his emotional control. type that can hurt yeah, his yeah. team, it doesn't. He, can, he seems to control it and make big saves. He's, he was fired up for that game as, wow. as much as those fans were, yet he, he did a great job in, the, in between the sticks. Yeah. Brilliant shout, and I couldn't uh, agree more. The first save was, was spectacular to, to get up on his feet and somehow extend his arms to keep the ball out. The second one's a bit bravery, a bit what goalkeepers do, and he gets it smacked yeah. in the face. But uh, as much as that, Rob, I just loved his reaction to the back four, to the fit thing like, no one's scoring against me today. It's not going to happen. And, and, and that, when you say with somebody who... Emotional control has been an issue for him at times. In that kind of atmosphere, he's one of those players who I would, in the past, question, oh, might this get to him today? Might he come out for something that he doesn't need to? Might he get yeah, involved we, we, we in the We quit questioning, Rob, but we, yeah, we, don't have any, we have very little evidence for that. Correct. You know what I mean? I, and I'm saying that that's mm. our more, it reflects badly more on us than him. I think he, he's one of mm. those players mm. who... There's certain players who play for England, Rob, who people tend to have can have a bad opinion, and it almost follows them for the rest of the career. Oh, he's not the good, this guy now. Jordan Pickford is one of those guys, and today on merit, he was, I think, 
named the man of the match, but quite rightly was in there with with, with what he did. And I, I just liked his his emo- his his controlled emotion around his back four and 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 mm. his leadership. It was like just telling that back four they ain't scoring against us today. Whatever happens, and um, a little bit more mm. of that through the team over a few more games, and we'll be seeing Everton in the Premier League next season. You know, just before we move on to Chelsea a little bit, Rob, we should have a line on Chelsea as well. Mm. You know, after the after the game's finished today, you know, and particularly after that game, yeah. and we've said about that on this podcast before that because we've lived it, that that teams in jeopardy find results. And we put the graphics up every single weekend, yeah. look at their running, look at the games they've got to play. It doesn't mean as much as it normally would. It just doesn't. Chelsea at home, they win the game, they get three points. I mean, you just never know what's going to happen. And throughout the weekend, Rob, and we're going to go and talk about all the major stories, all the clubs that were desperately needing something Mm, got it this weekend. Got it. And we'll go through them. You know, all the ones desperate because that, that, that extra... 5% 5% of energy and, and, and desire makes a difference at this time of the season. And um, well done, Everton. Well done, well done as a football club. Yeah. Well done as a fa- fan base. Well done, the manager. Well done, the players. That was an unexpected victory, a crucial three points, and just a it, was a... it was a joy to witness that kind of coming together as a football club. And that's why we love the game. Yeah. And that's why it's different to sports... You know, I'm going to say in America, where I understand the college college um, sport is, is is emotional and you're more invested in it. But I just, I, I, it's it's such an important part of people's lives, particularly in that city and, and and some of the cities around England, where it means everything for your team to do well. And we saw it play out on our screens in the US um, today, and it was it was phenomenal to watch. Yep, some great scenes, uh, Everton. Let's talk a little bit about Chelsea, Rob, because they were the other team who mm. turned up today. Still not guaranteed third spot. I think there's only three points between them now and Arsenal in, in fourth. Um, off day, passive. Um, well, their football, again, at times is, is, is well controlled and reasonably sleek. I looked at the numbers again. You looked at the, the shots on target, the real attempts when, when Pickford, yeah, you had to work taking off with a couple of big saves, but continuing to put the possession and, and the build-up, Rob, they've got a problem in the top end of the pitch. I thought Werner was very... Uh, was, was flaky today. He didn't look quite... At the race, yeah. Races. It, it just looked a bit meh. And then the, bit, the other question that, that then comes out, Rob, is... On a day like today, when they're desperate for a goal and things aren't happening and you've got your big Rom on the bench, he doesn't even bring him off the bench today. He makes substitutions. He doesn't even bring this, mm. the guy. It seems to me mm. that's done. That, that looks to me like that's done. If he doesn't even trust him to come off against a former team that might be a bit of motivation, mm. that he might nick a goal to give us a thing, that feels a bit like, ooh, not sure where, the, where that relationship goes. Well, they've definitely got a pro- problem up front. And they've got a upcoming problem at the back. Aspi Quarter, brilliant, brilliant player, a legend at the football club, is starting to show his age a little bit. Made a mistake mm-hmm. today. Tony Rudiger, we know, is going to be leaving the football club. Rob, yeah. the best defender by a mile at the, at the club. Yeah. Thiago Silva is going to be 38 in September mm. as a brilliant, brilliant player, but getting a little older. Christensen, I think, could leave the club as well. Yeah. Um, but the front line continues to, like, not mystify. I think we're not mystified anymore. Yeah. Werner and Havertz are not me. doing it's it. They're just not doing it. Yeah, it's just they're not doing it. Mason Mount, and by the way, did you read the reports today, Rob, or yesterday saying that there's some big bids going to come in for both Mason Mount yeah. and Reese James? Yeah. Which would be unheard of in previous Chelsea, like thinking about signing their star younger mm. players. You know, new ownership coming. Yeah. We don't know how those bids are going to be received. Yeah. But between, I mean, those two players are obviously top class, top class players for this football club. Um, but the, the, the signings of Havertz, of Werner, and Lukaku haven't done it at the moment. Just, no. just, just haven't done it. Rain on a different scale of disappointment, but that's the problem. That's what's holding Chelsea back because some of the midfield players. I thought, you know what? Back on a positive, Ruben Loftus Cheek, Rob. Mm. I thought today was good. Yeah, but Ruben Loftus Cheek looked good. Some good moves, and he drove forward, had a couple of shots. He looked good in the middle of the park. His managers talked about Eugenio him, and he? then uh, Kovacic. Did you see in the press conference? Did he? His manager he? talked about him and said, 
we've got to get that monster out of him more often. Every now and then you see it and you see a yeah. top class player. He said he's got to stop motivating himself. And I think there were signs of that. You're right. He drove once yeah. or twice, 20, 30 yards with the ball and, and just basically broke yeah. through every skillful field. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, Chelsea, we'll see. Next, I think this this kind of uh, ownership will be settled in the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, Sooner the better. Interesting for that, summer Rob. for them, Rob, Sooner in terms the of what they're going to do. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to move Lukaku on, he's, no, he's, he's of zero value sitting on the bench. No. And he's a very valuable asset in terms of what he's got as a striker. So, kind of a, a very interesting summer ahead. I just hope for Chelsea fans and the club itself that the ownership doesn't restrict what Chelsea can do in the market. Yeah. Selling and buying. They need they need that uh, ability to do that. So disappointed for Chelsea. I thought he started off okay, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but wow, it was Everton's day. Goodison Park. That was uh, pretty special to to really to to, to watch that game. Good stuff. Absolutely. Um, let's move it on to Burnley, my friends, who were away at, at, at Watford, Bickeridge Road, and got a two-one victory um, on the road. Three straight wins now for Michael Jackson. Nine. Was it it's, uh, 10 points out of possible 12? Um, incredible, incredible turnaround, Rob. Incredible <laughs> um, <laughs> way the football, the, the, this thing is playing out at the moment. Uh, the 10 points that they've got, the wins, what is it, three wins in the last four when I think they only had four all the rest of the season. I'm telling mm. you, if, if our producer would have allowed it, Burnley would have won the underappreciated <laughs> performance for three weeks running. Sean Dyche, Sean were taking it off you. Mike Jackson, Mike were taking it off you. Alan Pace, I wanted to give it to you, but Everton just emotionally got, got, the, got the, 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 the tip of the hat. Did you? Did you? The biggest question that the fans want to hear is, did you overestimate Sean Dyche, Robbie Earl? Tell our listeners. In Sean Dyche, I've trusted for nine and a half years, and in Sean <laughs> Dyche, I would have trusted that this form... This was what Sean was Would waiting you? for. This form would have come with Sean. Don't you worry about that. He says tongue in cheek. Oh, no, let, let, let me, let, yeah, let's, let's yeah. be honest and let's be frank, Rob. The decision was made. Anybody listening, put your hands up in the air if you thought it was a good decision to get rid of Sean Dyche. You won't see too many hands up in the air because people weren't thinking it's a great thing, Rob. And regardless mm. of that, the chairman made the decision. Michael Jackson came in the football club. Not quite sure what was going on and, and what's changed. There is a difference to to uh, Burnley. There's a little bit more flexibility and freedom in the tactics, certainly in the way that people are playing. Uh, and at 1-0 down, getting to the latter stages of a game, there was a belief and a drive in this team that earned them the three points that gives them a brilliant chance now, Rob, of, of, of staving off this, this relegation. It ain't done yet. And, and listen, we've seen these good runs and then them drop off. But... If, in regards to four weeks ago, the day the news that Sean Dyche broke, they'd left the football club, many people said, oh, they're down. That's them done. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we said it, Rob. We said it. Yeah. The decision will be heralded or, you know, with Alan Pace made that big call and big, big, big call. So far, amazingly good. My observations on this game, Rob, and didn't yeah. see all of it because all the game's going on at the same time. Yeah. The two goal scorers, my friend, mm. the two central midfield players, the first goal of the season for Jack Cork, the second goal of the season for Josh Brownhill, two midfield players under Sean Dyche, your Sean Dyche, that would have been sitting there backsides mm. back in front of that back four and not being encouraged to get forward. Now, you know... He's not my Sean Dyche. He's not my Sean Dyche. He's our Sean, our Sean Dyche. <laughs> oh, yeah. But isn't that a little sign, Rob, mm of maybe the things that's changed. As a midfield, and we've both played in those yeah, positions. Yeah. And your manager either wants you to get forward and get in the box, as your, your manager did all the time, because that's yeah. where your strength was. My manager wanted me to sit back and protect, because that's kind of my strength in the Premier League era. Is that a sign, Rob, of, of what yeah. this management team said to those midfield yeah. boys? You fool, don't, don't worry, get forward and try and score. Yeah, it, it is, Rob. And, and, and there is tweaks. At times, I've, you, I've seen this team morph into a... Four two three one. One of the strikers, if it's two, drops in with um, Lennon and, and McNeil, or whether it's Corne. Some I've seen it, and they go a little bit uh, four two three one, slightly different look. McNeil looks still again another excellent performance. Looks different. And it's interesting, Rob, because if if, in, if, yeah. if you if you were, it, I'm kind of 
sensing like the, that something went on with Sean and that maybe he was restricted with some of the players. But I'm thinking, we both played in midfield. I'm, I was an attacking midfield player, so my manager generally would say, as long as we're safe, as long as you've got a bit of cover, off you go. And I would go and make runs forward. I hated days when he right. said to me, I need you to sit in. I hate it. Now, if I had a season of that, maybe in the end I'd start going, this gaffer's not really for me because I'm, I'm not getting the best out of myself, Rob. And maybe Jack Cork and Browner were, were in the position where, as experienced players, they think, I can get forward and do a little bit, whether I score a goal or assist a goal, but maybe uh, Sean Darcher say, no, 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 you sit in here. It's a bit different. It's the opposite for you, Rob. If, if somebody was telling you to keep going and you, you, you didn't think of the space, would you have that? How would you feel with that, with that kind of manager? I, I, I did both of my career, Rob. Early yeah. days, I, I got forward and got uh, scored some goals. Mm. And then I got into a be- the, the Middlesbrough team got better and I was needed to do defensive side yeah. of it. And I adapted my game and I was happy doing that. So when your manager says about you, 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 know, you weren't happy being holding, mm. I didn't mind it. And it was a way that I could be in this side and it was exciting times at the club. Um, but, but midfield players, Premier League midfield players can play. You know, there's there's all different types, but they can play. They're not in the middle of midfield in the Premier League if they can't handle the ball and they can't pass the ball and they can't direct it into a corner of a net. Mm. You know, the midfield players are accurate with their with their passing. That's yeah. that's why they're a midfield player. So asking them in terms of getting the box makes total sense. They, the two boys from Burnley did it. They got the goals. They won the game. Amazing story that continues to go. I mean, it's it's pretty remarkable, Rob, what Burnley are doing at the moment. Yeah. Um, and with that result, just switching quickly to the Aston Villa 2 and Norwich City nil, Robbie Earl, yeah. that sends Norwich City down. Mm. They're going to get relegated again. They came up from the Championship last year. Um, you know, winning the, winning the league table... Yeah so comfortably we know now and they should know now it's a different animal it doesn't correlate to winning the championship in an easy manner it's a different not just different level but different uh, you've got to have more physicality than I think the Norwich have brought up before they think they can play their way out they they play their way in the championship and win in the Premier League you have got to be good because of the pressing teams the really good teams uh, uh, offensively and they've got to they've got to rethink a little bit and Stuart Webber is a sporting director and he's very heralded and he's done a great job and they keep coming back up again they stuck with Daniel Farga for a long period of time and they will start um, continue with Dean Smith but in recruitment can they whilst getting promoted which is not a given it's not easy can they find a type of player that can adapt can adjust to the Premier League better than what we've seen in the past that's going to be key for them and it's, it's always sad to talk about relegated teams Rob but yeah. it's the first time that we've done it this season yeah. Um, but it just smacks off what an incredible race we've got at the bottom. Norwich weren't ready or able to fight that 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 fight, and they've gone down. What what, what are your thoughts, Rob, on on Norwich this season and what they might need in the future? Yeah, it's, it's a good point. So my my th- th- thoughts were it was inevitable. I didn't particularly see a way uh, how it's saying, and, and it's not on Dean Smith because when he went in there, I, I think the rot was was already sort of set in. Mm. Um, yeah. I agree with you. I, I look at the team and I don't think it, it, it's designed to compete in the Premier League. They're not good enough players to have the ball to play their way out of trouble. They're not physical enough players to influence games with athleticism, with, with power, with speed. Um, I look at some teams and they've got, you know, you look at Brentford, let's say, who've come up and, and, and a front line with Tony and and Bomo and um, Weiser and players and you know midfield players who can Burnley don't look as capable as that and I know Burn- uh, Norwich we're, we're top of the table so what Norwich, I think yeah. is the, the future for Burnley for Norwich and this is where I think there's some hope let Dean Smith shape your team to come up because Dean Smith has brought a team mm. up Rob Aston Villa and he kept them in the Premier League mm. now yes you know it was tight the first year second year kicked on then it didn't quite goes he planned but Dean Smith has an understanding a of the championship and b of what the, the levels are and I never thought his team didn't have the right attributes for 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 the Premier League at times they didn't defend well enough and, and gave cheap goals away so I think it might be a slight variation of the knowledge we've seen before that Dean Smith can do and bring this team back up um, and I hope they get a chance to do it first time round yeah, the only thing I'd say to that, Rob, is that when you say about Dean Smith moulding this new look at Norwich, we know the setup there. Stuart Webber yeah. is a very 
not powerful, but he's a dominant director yeah. of football. That's yeah. their model. Mm. They, for the most part, pick the players. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, so I hope you're right. I hope Dean Smith has a really big say in, in who he well, brings even, it, who even they bring a tweak, in. Rob, um, I don't even think he's asking yeah, a power I shift. I, I just feel for me, and, and sorry to cut in, but it's like we've seen what they've done before, and that goes up and down. Yeah. And when it comes yeah. up, it's not. It's not ready and by the way one time you're going to go down and you're not going to jump up again so easily and then it becomes more difficult each year you're down so I hear you and, mm. and, and you're right in what they've done before is this team is it, are, are people open enough and flexible enough to say okay let, let's look at this with a different set of eyes and see if, if, if it can be done different mm. yeah We'll see, mate. And, and, and by the way, that, that's just, you know, it, it was such an important weekend for relegation. Mm. We opened our podcast with it. We've been on yeah. 30 minutes about it. And it's Correct. just, it was, a, it was a big weekend. First team got relegated. Yeah. Everton, Burnley, I mean, it's just deserving. There's plenty of time to give yeah. those clubs Absolutely. in this situation. Absolutely. time as we'd um, like to some time in, in the weekend. Not normally. People let us know not on normally. social media. But we have given them the first 13 minutes of the show. Let's also talk about a team, mm. a game that had connotations at both ends. Manchester City traveling to mm. Leeds United. Some people, including Mr. Musto, thought that this one might be a bit of a banana skin for, for City. <laughs> it was tight in the first half, in fairness. Again, um, Leeds were, were, were well set up. Had a kind of uh, back three in, in, a, in a different system. And, and we're 1 0 down, still in the game. But the, the, the injury that we're hearing is not great for, for Stuart, uh, Dallas in midfield before half time changed the, the, the way that Leeds went about things second half and the quality of City shone through. But they were competitive in the first half, Leeds, Rob, and, and, and I thought did a reasonable job of, of, of slowing Man City down. I thought they started off really well. I mean, you expect the energy there. The yeah. support from the crowd, again, it's another one of those mm. similar to Everton where Leeds United are, yeah. are loving life in the Premier League. They want it to continue. Um yeah, Calvin Phillips being injured. Also, Liam Cooper, Rob, was injured in yeah. the warm-up for this game, which which has been a problem for Cooper and the club. Like, so many injuries to important players. Um, you know, the, Leeds United, mate, and this goes back to the, the, the total number of points that we expected, mm. are very close to what you expect. But given Burnley's resurgence... Yeah. Everton's desire, Leeds are now in it. They're bang in it. And, and I'm so surprised we're saying it. And that's why you yeah. never, never yeah. know in these last few weeks what results start to come. Now, when you look at Leeds' kind of running in the next few games, they're banging trouble. Absolutely banging trouble, Leeds United now. And again, they'll, they'll get behind Arsenal, them. And Chelsea, Jesse Marsh has is, is just gulped. Yeah, <clears throat> he's just had a big gulp after watching uh, <laughs> the Everton Definitely. game today. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I mean... It, 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 of course, difficult, difficult game. Mm. Jesse Marsh afterwards, Rob, was... And I asked chat about this a little bit, you know, yeah. the on-the-field appreciation of the fans yeah. Yeah. from Jesse Marsh and the players. Mm. I get a manager wants to connect. Yeah. And he, he walk around and the support of Leeds United is, is brilliant. And they, they yeah. love the manager, Sean, um, Jesse Marsh. Uh, there's a few that are saying, you know, what, what you're doing, you've just lost 4-0 at home, and yet yeah. you, you, you're, you're fist-pumping mm. around Ellen Road. I'm okay with it. I think yeah. it is a little unusual. Yeah. Any any thoughts on that? Kind of the, um, the after get after whistle, final whistle stuff? With A little bit with you, and I have to admit, it, it, it was Lee Dixon who we went back to in the stadium, and he said... Listen, maybe the manager's trying to get connection with, the, with the, the, the fans and unite the group and keep it all positive. And I absolutely get that. And, and um, I kind of thought slightly differently on it. What I would say, Rob, it just felt awkward. It felt awkward to me that the team had fallen. And it wasn't that he was clapping the fans, because we've seen that. You know, you clap the fans, isn't it? It was like the, mm. the, the sort of pumping and the, the singing the songs and the... It, it felt a little bit too yeah. much. And, and, and this is where I'm going to be with Jesse Marsh. And I'm going to be totally frank and open. I think he's been excellent with everything that he's brought into the football club. And we know he was replacing Bielsa. The results have been decent. He changed the system yesterday. And unfortunately, with two in, one injury in the warm-up and an injury to a key man before half time, things didn't quite go. But on another day, they could have been 1-1 in the game. It could have been different. He speaks well. He obviously understands well. He's represented the American coach really well. He doesn't have to try too hard, Rob. 
please don't over try mm. to be you're in people respect you you've got you you've already i think made a good impression don't overdo it now he's got to concentrate on getting some results for his team and keeping this this football club in the league that matters more than anything else now yeah i think it's a fair comment i mean I, I, you would, I, I, who cares what's normal and what normal rob i mean normally a manager of that situation would be clapping yeah. and be like you know thanks look, appreciate the support in yeah. a bit more of a and by the way, I, I'm not saying what's right or wrong. No. I'm just saying what's that you see more yeah, and what you might expect. What, yeah. I guess it's acceptable. I appreciate the fan support yeah. and, and like, yeah. but the whole kind of fist pumping mm. and pointing. Yeah. It, it's anyway. It's his way of doing it, mate. Correct. And, and, he'll, that's okay. and you know that's that's the way he's doing it. And he's always said that he'll just be who he is. Yeah. And I respect that about him. Um, but I, I just want to bring it up because it did look a little unusual yeah, and a few people yeah. mentioned about it. It's what he's got to do, Rob, is get his team defending better from set pieces. That's Correct. two goals conceded yeah. against Man City. I don't know, Man City are really, really good at set pieces. You know, that that's something that, that you know, a team like Leeds or the teams at the bottom yeah. can, can, can really work on. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know, so that's something he's got to work on. But yeah, Arsenal, Chelsea, Brighton at home, Brentford away, Villa away. I mean, that's their running. Difficult, difficult, yeah. but it's difficult for everybody. Yeah. And whether Burnley and Everton can win every game or every other game, mm. I doubt it. Yeah. But but Leeds now are, are no question they're absolutely in it given this crazy form of Burnley and Everton football club. So I mean we just we've got one yeah, heck of a relegation. Oh, fight we've got now. everywhere in the, in the league. No word on, on Manchester yeah. City because I suppose in some respect there was pressure was on them. We'll talk about Liverpool in a moment, but Liverpool had won. Before yeah. getting a, a, a win at Newcastle, so if there is pressure and if they feel pressure, I don't particularly think they do. In all honesty, uh, Gundogan came out after and yeah. said, "You know, this is what you do in this situation when you top the league. You're used to it. Every game's a pressure game." Um, but they got the job done, Rob. I know we thought, well, certainly you thought, well, it could be a day when Leeds, if they're at the best with their runs from deep and the, the, the counter attacks. But in the end, I thought it was a really professional job. Some great finishes. Gabriel Jesus, Rob, is it starting to be a story. It's starting to deliver right when this team yeah. needs them at the top end of the pitch. Um, you know, Rodri it just becomes more and more important. I'll tell you what else I'm going to mention in this one, and he was in my, my thoughts for underappreciated player of the week. Amaric Laporte, my friend, was beastly in this game. He... I had a collision, mm. I think, with, with Strauch or Roman Cock or one of the defenders who were playing. He, he went down, had the concussion protocol, was okay to carry on. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's any adverse effects. But, Rob, he blocked. He put his head in. All the things that we don't necessarily see and expect from City, he was, I thought, absolutely outstanding for City. And when Leeds had spells in the game, I was watching him. He was pointing. He was getting the back four up. I just thought... Sometimes we don't appreciate some of the hard work and basic things that City players do. We always talk about the football and control mm. and the De Bruyne's and the Foden's and that. The aim week Laporte's are just as important. And it, it, I thought it was brilliant uh, 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 yesterday for Man City. Yeah, and Ruben Diaz, I agree with that, by the way. And Ruben Diaz coming back, Rob, more games for him. Such an important player. He's For me, he's the best defender, certainly centre-back at the football club, Ruben Diaz. I thought he had a good game as well. But Gabriel Jesus is interesting because... I mean, Peter's a nine. Like, the false nine at the moment is out of sync or out of favour with, with Pep. And yeah. he'll play uh, Jesus on the right-hand side. He's played him. We saw it in the big game against uh, at the Etihad, against Liverpool, where he scored a goal. I mean, you never know what you never know what Pep, who Pep's going to go yeah. with. I mean, who thought that Gabriel Jesus would be the man, like, in really great form at the moment? So, mm. I think also a, a day for the squad players of City. Like Liverpool, five changes, Rob, to the team. Yeah. Of course, from the Champions League. Um, you know, and yet a 2-0... Then comes a the control. Then the football takes over, and they look super comfortable. I still think that City look the most composed and comfortable mm. in 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 a lot of games. Uh, you know that the, of course it's all must win now. It's yeah. all must win now, and they've been there before. They've they've yeah. won the last fourteen in the Premier League to win the title in twenty nineteen with Liverpool one point behind. So they've been here before. Back to your point about the pressure, but no team can look as in control. When they get that second goal, the football takes over, um, and yeah, and 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 it just it just from yeah we'll get on to what Liverpool in a minute, Rob. But it just looks like City 
whoever they play, and yeah. there's five changes in this one, and Leeds away. I just thought that that, that energy, the early energy we saw from Leeds players, yeah. I thought after the Champions League um, game against Real Madrid, I just wondered if it might be a potential dropping a point situation, yeah. but absolutely not. 4-0, yeah. easy, comfortable, we roll on. I mean, there's, there's not much else to say. No. I mean, we said it all about City. I, I heard Pep say, Rob, before the game, this is our most important Premier League game of the season left. Because he said, this is before the semi-final. He said, we'll either be in or out of the final of the Champions League and that'll take care of itself, and then we'll finish off the Premier League games. He said, this game is our most important. And I, and I get the sense that he got that message through to the players. And mm. as you say, eventually, once the second goal goes in, their football controls it. They're, they're now mm. dominant. And 4-0. Um, mm. Didn't actually feel like a 4-0. And, and I understand what Jesse Moore said. Well, didn't feel like we got you know mm. that beat by 4-0. But it's four goals. Great, by the way, for the goal difference, Rob. That closed that right up with Man City yeah. getting those four goals. Down to one, so, isn't it? You know, everything to, to love from, from Pep's point of view. Clean sheet, four goals, and uh, keeps rolling on, going back to the top of the table. Let's turn it to, to Liverpool, because they were away at Newcastle. And again, I think if we if, if it's form since Eddie Howe took over at Newcastle, they've been the top four. Uh, such has been the form. Um, 38 points he's won in 23 games, which... Apparently, was probably is probably going to be enough to keep you up, regardless of what Steve Bruce had done before. That's how good they've been mm -hmm. um, against a Liverpool yeah, team yeah. who made five changes themselves to the team that played in Europe. And 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 yeah. you know, Bex, as she does in this show, was sort of, oh, I don't know if I like what Klopp's doing, and is it a gamble? And she was kind of just giving me those vibes. I said, Bex, I'll be okay. He trusts them. It's a squad. It's, it's not yeah. a weakened team. It's a different team. He's got to get man minutes. And, you know, why why do you leave Salah? And I went, he's played a lot of football and there's a lot of big games coming up. And eventually, Rob, it was only one. Um, it was an abdicator goal. But as uh, somebody pointed out to us, it was Milner that, that makes it and, and Cater scores it. Two players bought in. Um, they had 24 shots. So they were dominant. It was a matter of could they get the second. I thought it was a professional... No nonsense, yeah. grinding out when we need to, mainly in control, yeah. even though it's only one goal win. Mm. That was mm. a, a good sign for Liverpool right where they are at this time of the season. Absolutely right. Couldn't agree more. Professional performance. It took a little bit of time, didn't it? Mm. Because of the start for St. James's and the way they're playing. You have Trent rested, Salah, Fabinho, Thiago, all rested from the starting 11. It took, a, I, I, what I make a note at, I think it was like, 15, 20 minutes, then they start to get the control. Yeah. The goal goes in from Naby Keita. Lovely goal, by the way. Mm. What a composed bit of play from Naby Keita. Yeah. And again, a little bit like Man City, Rob. The squad players, when you're at Liverpool now or at Man City, they, they want to win a title. Mm. So where you might get a bit of a disgruntled old pro, mm. well, maybe not old pro, but the squad yeah. players don't often buy in to some, like when they get a chance in the first team. Uh, the, the, do you know what I mean? They want to be first team players. Not yeah, I'm a, on the they don't want to be in and out. Oh, I'm in for one game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. But now they're going for a title. They want that winning medal. They want to go. So you've got everybody pulling in the same direction. And with City's five changes and with Liverpool five changes, they're doing a the business. And you're right. At 1 0, I never really. There's a couple of little looks from Newcastle mm -hmm. going forward. I think was, um, Joe Ellington had a chance. Ellington and there was maybe it, yeah. another one. Yeah, but but I thought they were in control. Mm. I thought they were professional. I think the manager's done a brilliant job of resting and rotating yeah. players, Rob. Yeah, yeah. With all the competitions they're in, they've got an FA Cup final, which is a midweek game in the next few weeks. Apart from, you know, the Champions League game they got as well. I thought it was a, it was a very good day for the manager. Um, and one player I want to pick out, Rob, just looking down at my notes. Mm -hmm. What a brilliant player Andy Robertson is. <laughs> Andy Robertson. What a brilliant player. I mean, not only defending, there was one play late on, Rob, really late on. He ran all the way back. I think he slid and make a sliding challenge to win the ball back. And then he sprinted 60, 70 yards mm. with the ball to attack. What a consistent, well-balanced, great attitude, brilliant professional, a Scottish player that, that has the attributes of I remember for Scottish players and the ones I played with, basically being brilliant pros. Brilliant, brilliant pros. I had a fun and a joke, and I'll get your take on Scottish players in a second. But I found them to be great fun, 
trained really well and dedicated, like really, really good pros. And I played with a ton of Scottish players. He's he's out the same mold. I thought he had a great game and and made you know underappreciated something that we talk a lot about, yeah. Rob. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure the fans appreciate him. I'm sure his teammates do and the manager does. I just wonder if a wider football fan knows of the quality and the determination, the heart and the attitude and the mentality of Andrew Robertson. Thought he was excellent. Yeah, I, I think people are, Rob, and it's probably more for the assists and, and you know, the him and Trent together um, are probably, you know, as good a, a fullback pairing you've got in Europe. Um, but you're right. His attitude, his will... He's got a real drive about him, Rob, and, and, and fires people up. I see him once or twice. I saw him, I think it was midweek. Uh, he, he had a pop at Van Dyke over something like, you know, Big Verge is... is, is yeah, he did, yeah, he did. And he, yeah, he has he a little did. bit, you know, he doesn't mind whoever it is. He wants to win things. And I think what, what stands mm. out for me with him, Rob, is that it, it, it's a nod to the recruitment. It's a nod to knowing players, seeing players, understanding players. He came from Hull, Rob. On, on, on for not very much money yeah. and has turned into being mm. one of the best um, fullbacks in, in the Premier League we've seen for, for, for some time. So you're right, it's a good shout. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a drive in the football club. I think you see that drive when the game finishes with the fans, that, with the players that come on, with the players who play. And there's, there's a real mix of, I don't feel it's like the 11 stars who start. You know, a Jota starts, a Firmino starts, a Mane starts, a Diaz starts, it doesn't matter. They're all ingrained and focused on, on what's important. So, interesting few weeks coming mm. up. Big week. We've got to go to Villarreal and, and deal with that one first to get to the Champions League final. Then they've got Premier League and FA Cup mm. uh, to come. So, plenty still to do for Jurgen Klopp and his team. But on a, on a day when I think people thought this could be a slip up for either City or Liverpool, never really felt it was happening. No, really, really impressive, Robin. And just think about those games. Tuesday, of course, Villarreal hosts Liverpool. Liverpool yeah. take a 2 0 lead um, to El Madrigal, um, home of the Yellow Submarine. <laughs> there, there's not going to be a problem there, is there? Just a quick line. I mean, we would expect, given we everything that we know, and we know this game is crazy, I, I, we, you've got to expect they're going to go through. You would. Um, 20 clean sheets in the Premier League and all that. The only thing I'd say, Robin, I think I mentioned on our last podcast. I remember doing a couple of, um, I think it might have been UEFA games back then or Champions League qu- uh, group stage. I think I once Arsenal were there and I was working in the media. And I, it was the first time I went, smallish, intimate ground, packed with fans, the yellow submarines, the noise. The, the, it was a little mm. bit like, if you mm. go 1-0 down there in the first 20 minutes, you got a game. You, they'll have a game. Now, if they can control the possession and if they can somehow find a way to get the first goal, then it's done. But, listen, I, I expect Liverpool to see it through. But it, Unai Emery, that group and that, that stadium will be looking forward to um, Tuesday night. What about Wednesday night, my friend? The Bernabeu. Ooh. Real Madrid at home Ooh. against Man City. Ooh. Man City, of course, leading 4-3. Yeah. I mean, don't go anywhere. Everybody, no. every, oh, I mean, that's oh. this is the game to watch I mean, on said Wednesday that, it can't be better. It can't be anywhere. US. It can't be better than what we saw the other day. Sorry to put the thing here. It can't be better. <laughs> it, can't. No, it, it can't. But it's laced no. with jeopardy and, and, and skill level and, and, and drama um, and entertainment. I said when this draw was made, and I, and I think, again, I'm, just to echo, I said this one will be tighter than people think. And, I, and I, over the two legs, I still think it'll be tight. I think the odd goal might still decide it. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if City score. I certainly wouldn't be surprised if Real Madrid score. But I think City have enough with the rest, with the focus, with, with what Pep's talking about now at this stage of the season. Almost like his group seem like they're almost enjoying now. This is what we play for. Um, again, I think they'll get it done. I think we get an all English final, but I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say 100% sure. I, I, I'm interested in the flow of the game, the rhythm of the game, as I, as I often am. Now, you know, we saw two sides of Real Madrid in the first leg, Rob. Yeah. We saw, hey, defensive, passive, sit back, mm. respect City's football ability. Yeah. We saw that. Um, and then when, of course, they go behind a couple of goals or whatever, mm. then they turn into, oh, oh sod it, let, let, we got to have a go. And then we saw this end-to-end basketball game for a lot of periods in this first game. What's it going to be like at the Bernabeu? I, 
I, I tend to think it's going to be a very similar pattern. I think they'll be defensive. I think Man City's football will will humble them. I think they'll, they'll, they'll sit behind the ball and wait to see what happens. At some point, of course, they've got to come out and play because they're, they're losing in the game. And then you get into this toe-to-toe situation where, quite frankly, anything can happen. Mm. Particularly if Benzema, again, is every time he touches the ball, it seems to fly into a corner of the net. So I... Th- I s- I quite strongly feel that Man City will go through, Rob. I think mm. they're the better team. I think that they'll they'll take chances better in this game. Well, I don't know why I think that, but they, they create I think they get a lot of chances, Rob. And yeah. I think they'll get I think they'll score at least one goal because Man uh, Real Madrid will be vulnerable when they open mm. up. If Ruben Diaz plays and Carl Walker, who's going to be a game time decision, yeah. Cancelo is obviously back played in, in this uh, the league game this weekend. Yeah. If those two guys are back, I'm even more sure that Man City will go through. But, yeah. you know, we all know about Real Madrid's past. We all know about some of these players. You know, if there's one team that can, that can throw you off and, and make people like me eat my words, it's Real Madrid and, and these players. So, yeah. again, brilliant, brilliant match on Wednesday look, for everybody to look forward to. Yeah, Walker is a doubt I'm hearing. I think they're talking that he may even not play for the end of the season. I think his fingers crossed on that one. And that, no. just, just the other note, Rob, no. I'm, I'm just wondering, no bearing... Uh, Real Madrid winning the league. I saw Angelotti with a big cigar celebrating with his team <laughs> ahead of the game and somebody said, oh, he could be Everton manager or he could have that big cigar on I mean, won another league tra- yeah. title. That won't have any bearing on this game, will it? They'll be ready and focused under Angelotti for, for, for this. I, I would think they'll be absolutely fine. I, I can't imagine. There's such a bit. I mean, no, no bearing. Yeah. I mean, he's a fun guy and he has a great picture, wasn't yeah. it, with the guys in the background? <laughs> Yeah. Um, what a bloke! What a, yeah. I mean, what's he won all the leagues now? Sure. Any top, top flights or something? I mean, what a bloke! What a bloke! And uh, whether he can he can get Real Madrid to another Champions League final? Yeah, I mean, wow! Would incredible, but, wouldn't it? Again, when, when you know I, what I, we've I re- seen them yeah, be. early Real Madrid. No, nobody really fancied them this year. Nah, they can't. You know, in the semi final and still only one goal behind. Yeah, looking forward to that one on Wednesday. Let's finish off mm. with yep. the the race uh, for fourth spot, mate, because it pretty much looks as though it's between Arsenal and, and, and Tottenham now. I believe. United, if they lose tomorrow, definitely can't get full spot. Um, yeah. Don't quite think they can anyway with, with the form. But West Ham and Arsenal, London derby was always going to be interesting. West Ham between those semi-finals against Eintracht Frankfurt, um, who they lost 2-1-2 two, in midweek. So they've got a big game to look to Thursday. But went quite strong, Rob. It was quite a strong team, probably stronger than I thought. Um, Suchek rested, Rice played, Antonio rested. But apart from that, Bowen started. Um, ben Rama for now started. So it was a pretty strong West Ham team uh, against a, an Arsenal team. They come off wins against Chelsea and Wilsick wins against Manchester United. And Mikel Arteta's team get it done again today. And I thought this was in common with the top two teams in, in the league where mature, no nonsense, not great football, but important win for Arsenal and, and I thought he should get a lot of credit for Mikel, Mikel Arteta because we know he, when they're good they can play nice football and we know that he's trying to build um, a spirit and a character in the football club but I thought they were mature today I thought it was a really impressive performance against a West Ham t- team that can be dangerous Yeah I did as well I mean the thing with West Ham today Rob the centre-backs wasn't it with the, the two yeah. set-piece goals um you know, first one was direct, second was a second phase set piece. Mm. You know, they, they've, they've got Ogbonna out, Diop out and Dawson out. Players that like to head the ball. Mm. You know, you got Cresswell in there. So I think, and, and Moyes said about it afterwards, Rob, that centre-backs is a bit of an injury nightmare for them right now. There's even doubt over Kurt Zuma, who played well, to be yeah. fair. So I get that. The rest of the couple of players, the injuries that they've got, to go again, Rob, after a big mm. game on Thursday at home, you know, it takes a lot emotionally out of, and everybody involved yeah. to, to raise themselves in that disappointing loss in the Europa League semi-final against Frankfurt um, to go again a few days later at home is not easy with those injuries with I think suspended actually wasn't he um, Craig Dawson Fe- Craig Dawson um, yeah he got difficult. a red card against Chelsea last week yeah, yeah so he was out yeah. yeah but fair play to Arsenal yeah. fair play to Arsenal Rob and I, I agree with everything that you said a couple of things a couple of points I want to, want to bring up quick mm. again similar kind of theme here squad players squad players that, not, that maybe aren't first 11 players mm. stepping up and getting the job done Nuno Tavares. Now, 
<laughs> At times he looks really classy yeah, going yeah. forward. Yeah. Other times he runs, literally <laughs> runs into players and gives the ball away. I don't trust him too much defensively, but at least he's having a go. Mm. And, and the managers trust him at left back. He could maybe switch things around and play other people there. He's, he's playing. Uh, Mohamed El Neni in the middle of the park. Mm. Again, not, it feels like there's no big future for him. Comes into the side and does a really good job in the holding role. Deepest line midfield player. Does a good job. Like He's pretty reliable in possession. Rob Holding. A more experienced player gets his goal, of course, his first Premier League goal, isn't it ever? Um, and whether you know, he came in for Ben White, he was injured at centre back. Yeah. Well done. And and the, the last guy, Eddie Nketiah. Yeah. Now, fair play to this kid. Mm. Fair play to Eddie Nketiah because he hasn't had a, a, a good run in the side. No. When he's been in there, I know that I've felt that is he really going to be good enough for this level? Mm. Um, well, I tell you what, he played well today. Yeah. Played well. Got some opportunities. Just lacked the goal, the finish. He came close a couple of times. But fair plays win for running around, using that that energy. I thought he took care of the ball pretty well when it went up, went up yeah. to him. He floats naturally, floats to the left hand side like most right footed strikers do. I thought he had a good game and fair play. He's trying to he's trying to persuade this manager and this club that yeah. they they should give him a, a, yeah. a good contract, a first team squad, a good contract. Because if they don't. Then he feels like he's going to be sitting his backside on the bench. He'll, he'll leave. I think you said after the game, Rob, that they should keep this kid. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. For, for, for what he's shown this season and this little run of, of, mm. of games that he's had, he's got some goals, of course, which always helps. But it looks like that Lacazette might leave mm. and it looks like they're going to go for a, for a higher profile striker. But Eddie Nketiah is in a good spot. And these games, the trust that he gets from, the, from his teammates with his performances the trust that he'll get from the fans and his manager. I think he's done himself really well. And um, I, I, would, I would hope that he signs a new contract and stays at the club. It's a good point, you know, because I was, think, I was thinking, I think uh, Rebecca asked us at the end of, of, of Goal Zone today about Nketiah, what do I think and what's his position? And I, and I kind of said, I think both are kind of looking at each other and trying to work out what, what the future is. Uh, you're right. I said, I wouldn't lay him out the building. There's something about him, Rob. The more I see him, the more I'm st- I, I kind of like and see. And, and you know what, what came to me as, as I was watching him today? And, you know, I, you know, I have a friendship with, with Ian Wright. Got to know Wrighty through uh, Mob Wright, my good friend at Palace. Saw Wrighty come in. Wrighty didn't start professional football till I think, 24, 25. Was a late starter. Came in at football, blew up at, at Palace, went to Arsenal, became a legend. This kid could be just a bit of a late developer. And I just, I just think, mm. if I'm Arsenal, he could come back to bite you. In, in three or four years, I think he's 21, mm. 22 mm. now, three or four years, you, you could have a strike. You know, he starts to finish those chances he had. His movement was good today. He's got good pace. He's got good football intelligence. So he, when the ball comes up, he sometimes holds it better than Lacazette and, he, and n- nips people in. Yep. I just get the sense that mm. there could be a player in there, Rob, and the next two or three years developing him could be quite an exciting look. I'm not going to say he's becoming Ian Wright because Wright is a one-off and a brilliant, brilliant finisher. Yeah. But this kid gets chances in games and, and, and I like his movement off the shoulders and I like his in football intelligence. Um, one I think Arsenal should hold on to and let, let's just see how he develops. Absolutely right. So I also got the job done, Robbie. I'll put him in a, I still think in a, in a prime position of finishing mm. the top four. Get a little gap now with Spurs. Yeah. But we'll jump on to Spurs now, Rob. Spurs got yeah. the job done against Leicester City. 3-1. Mm. Hyomin Sun scores a lovely Crop. goal with his left foot. Bends it into the top corner as easy as you like. Um, Kane gets the first goal with a header. I mean... <laughs> It, it is going to go down. It's going to go down to this game on, on May the 12th, isn't it, Rob? Though, yeah. looking North at the North running in the next game, I mean, Tottenham's, you know... Th- th- Spurs go to Liverpool on, on Saturday, Their running is harder. Spurs go no, to Liverpool. Is it Liverpool? It's Liverpool, Liverpool away. Yeah, away. <laughs> yeah. So if Arsenal win the next game, I think it could be a five-point yeah, difference by the time going we get into that the, game, which changes everything. Yeah, yeah. May the 12th on that Thursday. Yeah. It was interesting well, though to, today, Rob. Well. I don't know if you Both noticed teams. with the uh, mm. the lineup. Kulusevski went to the bench and came on as a sub and lined yeah. things up. But uh, and it was interesting because yeah. what no no shots in the last two games, no shots on target in the last two games. Spurs just wondered if it was one yeah. of them where yeah. maybe Kulusevski's done so well, mm. we just drop him out a bit. Little change of, of dynamic. Lucas Moura came in, just ignited things. Sonny scores two beauties. Harry Kane gets ahead. All of a sudden, they go into that Liverpool game thinking. A little bit, we did a little breakdown today, uh, Tim and I, after the game on, you know, are Spurs a team that could, you know, make Liverpool slip up with that 
three players up front counter attacking with that yeah, high they're, line. Counter attacking, you know, yeah. could they could they make it? Could they hurt yeah. them? They've done it with Man City. They beat Man City twice this season. Could be they could yeah. they be the team to, yeah. to stop uh, Liverpool? So be interesting. Mm. Massive game next mm. weekend uh, at, at Anfield with a Liverpool team that we know will play a high line, regardless of how Spurs play. Uh, really looking forward to that one, and it could have a big bearing on whether Spurs finish in the top four. Absolutely right. And, and and like the other races, Rob, I mean, it's just brilliant, isn't it? It's just brilliant with these two rivals that are going to mm. go head-to-head real soon. Yeah. A great race. Um, and I think with Spurs, I think it's a really good shout that for the Liverpool game. That, But you just never know with Spurs, do you? Yeah. You never know. Yeah. They, might, they might not see the ball. Mm. They might not get any chances. You might not get any touches from, from those front players of Spurs. You just, you just don't really know. But absolutely right. Just running around, Rob, the last few results in the Premier League. Yeah. Crystal Palace again. Great results. Southampton are... You know, are, are in that mode at the moment. They're drifting mm-hmm. down the league table right now. Um, they're fine, I think, with relegation. They've got 40 points. Palace, good victory for them. Mm-hmm. Wolves nil, Brighton three. Robert, you the result from the from the weekend. And Brighton doing good things and, and looking to, to have their best ever finish, yeah. I think, in their, in, in their history in the top flight. So more good work from, mm-hmm. from these kind of young and upcoming managers and Patrick Vieira and Graham Potter. Uh, and it just rounded off a... Another wonderful weekend in the Premier League where all the clubs that needed to do something pretty much did. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, we lost Norwich City to relegation. But yeah, just just any any final thoughts on the weekend, my friend? It was special, mate. It, it was a special weekend of Premier League football. Mm. They, they, listen, mm. every weekend has drama, every weekend has stories. This was special. Mm. I remember that Everton game. I, I'll be talking and sitting in a pub Me with too. mates in years' Me time. Too. And we're talking about that Everton result. Whether they stay up or go down, that 1-0 win against Chelsea, mm. it was uh, something special. Listen, mate, time to wrap it up on a fabulous week of football. Liverpool and City don't miss a beat. They keep winning at the top of the table. Spurs and Tottenham, they're going in, in good form and looks like that North London derby could be a big decider. And at the bottom, Burnley make it three wins in three. And Goodison Park ensured that Everton... Had to win against Chelsea today. We'll be back on Wednesday. That's May the 4th. We're going to look back at the second leg of those Champions League semi-finals. City, one goal ahead against Madrid. Liverpool, two-goal lead at Villarreal. Can they make it an all-English final? But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty. Together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe. Stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good, good night. night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.